when he ran for president in 1976, he ran as an orthodox budget balancer, right. complete with a proposal to uh, reduce the federal budget by $90 billion. That's at a time when the budget was $300 billion. <laughs> so time, a huge reduction in the federal budget. He was just returning those functions to the states. <laughs> Ronald Reagan uh, used to say things like this, uh, quote, um, I say there are simple answers to many of our problems, simple but hard, unquote. Uh, he's gotten a lot of grief over the years uh, for being a, a kind of simplifier uh, and for uh, allegedly neglecting the complications of policy making that experts are expert in. Um, <laughs> How do you how do you answer that kind of criticism, and in particular in his um, in his domestic policy, where on the great issue of the economy he came around to to his own version of Reaganomics, right. uh, relying heavily on supply side um, theory. Uh, did he? What do you think about this? His use of supply side. It was a it was a breakthrough in a way at the time. In retrospect, what do you think of it? And do you think that maybe he uh, helped to delegitimize deficits, or to legitimize, sorry, deficits more than he should have? Yeah, well, that, well that's a complicated question. Yeah. I think uh, first thing I'd say is one, uh, Reagan's embrace of supply side economics shows his great adaptability and that he wasn't sort of fixed in stone uh, in certain ways. I mean, when he ran for president in 1976, he ran as an orthodox budget balancer. Right complete with a proposal to uh, reduce the federal budget by $90 billion. That's at a time when the budget was $300 billion. <laughs> so a huge reduction in the federal budget. He was just returning those functions to the states. In the states, right? <laughs> a, a perfectly yeah. sound idea, but exactly, it, uh, it yeah. left him open to huge attacks about what it would mean for a low-tax state like New Hampshire that votes first. Yes, so right. arguably politically imprudent, um, but, it, but, it, but that was his idea, and he was always good at defending those ideas. By 1980, he's still for reducing federal spending. Uh, but he's embraced the idea of tax cuts, which, remember, Barry Goldwater voted against the Kennedy tax mm -hmm. cuts way back when. <laughs> and Republican orthodoxy had always been, cut spending and then we can cut taxes, right. except That's guess right. what never happens. So he embraced the growth logic of supply-side economics, which I continue to think is correct. Mm -hmm. Circumstances are different today, but that's another story. Uh, and I think uh, there was a lively debate throughout his presidency, uh, and I think he sat back and just let it go on. Um, uh, with bemusement on his part, between people who said, well, let's cut taxes and it will starve the beast, and it will compel Congress to spend less, right. uh, versus other people who said the path of the old Orthodox Republicans, like David Stockman, who said, no, we've just got to be virtuous, you know, like farmers <laughs> from the Midwest where Stockman <laughs> was from, and not spend like that. And you know, they both have good points, um, and there have been long debates about that ever since amongst technical economists. So Reagan may have been wise to stand back and say, you know, who but wasn't, knows wasn't there a third position that, that is, at least publicly there seemed to be, that is that you could cut taxes and feed the beast. <laughs> right. I mean, <clears throat> the argument was you'd have more revenues, more tax revenues right. coming in off, off a bigger base. Right. And so you wouldn't have to make painful cuts on the domestic side. Right. Well, now that was the view that Jack Kemp often held, Art Laffer held. Um, one of the things that is, and Reagan himself once in a while would say that in his, mm -hmm. in say, off-the-cuff comments at press conferences. Uh, one of the things that you discover when you go through the documents is his actual economic team, the people who were hired <laughs> at Treasury, yes. never once projected higher revenues from the income tax cuts. Is that right? They thought they would backfill and have higher growth about five or six years out mm -hmm. um, and thought it would it make, it also thought, one part that's been forgotten, this would be anti-inflationary, mm -hmm. exactly the opposite of orthodox economics. You right. know, Jimmy Carter said, you cut taxes, it'll be inflationary. And Reagan, again, showing his keenness of mind he, in that debate, he shot back, why is it inflationary for people to keep and spend their own money, but not inflationary for you to tax mm -hmm. it and spend it? Mm -hmm. Great question, right? right. Uh, so he understood several parts of the logic of supply-side economics, but their own budget projections never said it's going to pay for itself right away from day one. That was the really, uh, Jude Winiski and the really enthusiastic supply-siders. Uh, uh, there's, there's another part of the story, which is Federal Reserve monetary policy that gets very complicated, yes. and, and that was very contentious, too. Uh, so they did always try to emphasize budget cutting at the same time. They had a tiny bit of success. The, the, 
famous Reagan budget cuts were much oversold by the media, did not amount to very much. They were some, but, and they may, I think it's arguable they made a mistake by leaving entitlements in the, what Reagan liked to call the social safety net out of the items that they were going to mm -hmm. cut back. So they mostly went after things like food stamp eligibility and um, certain other discretionary spending programs and said, we're going to leave Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and some of these other things alone. And that was probably a mistake because that's now and has been since then where the largest growth in the federal spending is taking place. Although uh, Bill Vogley has shown that Reagan did reduce the rate of growth to almost nothing yeah. on, in, on the welfare side, as it were, the social welfare side um, of yes. the federal budget. Yes, that's right. Uh, if Now that we have this 30-year record to look at, Reagan looks pretty good. No, He's he, most successful of any president in control. He didn't spending. reverse right. any growth, but, uh, but he did really right. lower the curve amazingly. Right. For well, you could really tell, I mean, one little detail I think that's fun is when David Stockman left in 1985, and he'd mm. been kind of a collaborator with the enemy as the spenders and taxers, uh, he replaced him with Jim Miller, and the Democrats up in Congress tried to prohibit Miller from coming to budget meetings on Capitol Hill. That was a sign that things <laughs> were getting rough. And they did uh, have some success in a second term in restraining growth. Mm.